Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of Star Sector. So if you're curious what Star Sector is, it is a open world single player space combat role playing exploration and economic game. You take the role of a space captain seeking fortune and glory however you choose. It's a little reminiscent of uh, Freelancer or the X series. So I'm going to start a new game. This series, I'm going to go into as much of the gameplay mechanics as I can, so you can treat this as somewhat of a tutorial as well, if you're looking to learn Star Sector. I'm going to start the very standard start, a bounty hunter commanding a wolf class frigate, with a kite class shuttle under my command, with an officer, on normal difficulty with tutorials. I'm going to breeze through the tutorials, but also um, sort of add in any details that I think are necessary for you to learn the game. So when we start off, you start off as a teeny little fleet, these two ships. So me and my um, officer. And we uh, are going to need to scavenge a local debris field. So to play, um, this is the standard map. Mouse wheel, zoom in, zoom out. Um, I'd go over more, but I think the uh, the map, the full map like this, comes in handy later. So here we are. Here's the debris field, and here is the rest of the solar system. Uh, of course, this game is galactic. It's not just about one solar system. All right. So all we got to do to move is hold left mouse button, or just yeah. I usually just hold mouse, left mouse button. Now that we're in the debris field here, hit six which is the ability of um, rummaging debris or salvaging debris. The two important things to read here are how likely it is that we find something of value and what is the risk of uh, salvaging this debris field. Um, likely and low are great. So I'm gonna ex to take the risk and this gives us supplies and heavy machinery. Supplies is, um, Supplies and fuel are the two most important things you're going to need. Supplies helps to keep your ships working and running. Um, and fuel keeps you moving. So, yeah, those two are very, very important. Uh, heavy machinery is a secondary commodity that helps you salvage larger debris fields and stuff like that. Uh, you know, survey planets, etc., etc. You can also salvage debris fields more than once but the risk goes up. Uh, some debris fields will have high risk or some debris fields will have very unlikely chance to find debris. Um, I'm not going to take the advanced risk. So for me to advance the tutorial, just F5 for quick save. So let's toss a quick save out. And a pirate fleet is approaching. It's a shoddy rust bucket. Um, but combat in this game is very difficult. So for us to continue this tutorial, I have to destroy this pirate ship. Um, there are a few different options when you engage an enemy fleet. You can t attempt to disengage. Your disengage chances go up if you have a very small fleet or if they have a very large fleet. Um, I'm obviously not going to disengage this one. You can try to talk your way out of it or engage. And I'm going to go with the engage. Uh, so here you have two choices. One is transfer command for this engagement, which is like switching ships. I want to command the largest ship or the best ship in my fleet. And I'm already doing that. And, uh, or just continue. Now you're in the ship deployment screen. So just because you have ships in your fleet doesn't mean you have to have to actually deploy each and every one of them. A lot of your ships are going to be cargo ships, fuel um, carrier ships, or salvage ships, stuff like that, non-combat ships. You wouldn't deploy those in combat unless you were absolutely needing to. Um, I'm going to deploy both ships here, and it's going to cost me six supplies. So now that we're deployed, this is sort of the tactical screen. Uh, you can only order so many different uh, commands on the tactical screen, and I get a new command point every two minutes. And anytime you order commands, it's not going to reuse uh, command points because basically when a command point is used, it gives you a small window where any command that you issue is free. So I just issued, of course, a whole bunch of um, commands. I don't want to do all these, so I'm going to hit end to cancel them. I just want my shuttle here to follow me. 
Uh, then when you're done issuing commands here, you can hit tab to enter the battlefield. And now you're controlling your primary ship um, and your, your, all of your other ships in your fleet are just following whatever commands you just issued. Now before I get into combat, there's a few very important things to point out. Uh, first is flux. Flux is sort of, uh, as you can see I have a flux meter here. Flux is sort of the energy that you have. Uh, you will have a certain capacity for flux. You'll have a certain passive uh, dissipation rate of flux. Flux is sort of like how much power you have. So if you think of Star Trek saying like, ooh, you know, shields are 10%, that's sort of like flux is 90% out of 100%. When your ship maxes out on flux, you will short circuit or you'll overload. When you overload, you can sort of move around but your shields will go down, your weapons will be disabled, you're basically a sitting duck. You really, really, really don't want to max out on flux, ever, if you can help it. Uh, and then you want to try to max your enemy out on flux, because if your enemy maxes out on flux, they're a sitting duck. Sitting ducks are very easy to kill. The other thing I wanted to show is both armor and hull. Armor isn't obvious. Armor, this little portrait down here, I know I'm panning the, the screen, but this little portrait, see how it's all green? That means I have full armor. Let's say I get hit in the engines a whole bunch. In this little portrait, you'll see my engines go to yellow and then the red. That means that the armor that my ship has is being ablated or otherwise used up. And then if I continue to get hit in spots that have my armor damaged, uh, I'll start taking hull damage. Your hull is here, 1800 as you can see. Uh, once your hull hits zero, your ship explodes. Um, enemy ships can get, well, we'll get into combat later. And then another thing to look at is weapon groups. So my weapon group one is a pulsed uh, laser, which is my sort of default weapon. Weapon number two, as you can see here, they light up, is my um, rocket pods, my swarmer rockets. I'm actually going to do control two to turn them to auto fire. I don't want to control them manually. And then my weapon group number three is, and here you can see the on each weapon group, you can see sort of the range it can fire at. So my primary weapon can only really fire what I'm looking at. My missiles, again, can only really fire what I'm looking at, but they have slightly wider or longer range. My weapon number three is an ion cannon in the back and uh, point defense on the sides. Point defense helps shoot down enemy missiles, and they're, you almost always, I can't really imagine a scenario where you don't want them on auto fire because you don't want to have to manually shoot down enemy missiles. You're going to be busy shooting enemy ships. Uh, so I generally, on all of my ships, have one or two weapon groups I control manually, manually being like the biggest, hardest hitting weapons that take up the most energy, because the game does a pretty good job of auto firing, but um, you don't want your weapon groups using up all your energy, because that could get you killed. So let me just get into this fight so you can see what it looks like. Another thing I should say is right-clicking turns on and off your shields. When your shields are on, they passively use up some flux. So keeping your shields up at all times isn't necessarily a terrible idea because it does protect you from unexpected damage, but it will cost you flux. Also, when you have your shields on, any hits that your shields receive build up hard flux. So there's a concept of soft flux and hard flux. Soft flux will dissipate on its own when you're not using up energy. Hard flux can only be dissipated by venting it. You can choose to vent, it's the by default the V key. Venting out your flux will disable your ship for the duration of the amount of flux you have, also dependent on the type of ship you have. So some ships dissipate flux really slowly, some really quickly. Um, and while you're dissipating flux, all you can do is move. You can't fire, you can't shield yourself. So you're essentially like you're overloaded, but you can choose when to vent your flux. Um, and then the other thing is, if you hold left shift by default, um, your ship will always face your cursor here, which allows you to strafe, which is a little awkward at first, but that's exactly how you should fight. Um, I would say Star Sector combat is actually very difficult, and being destroyed uh, while you're learning to play the game is very much the norm. Um, so use a lot of quick save, utilize a quick, use a lot of quick load, and try to get in good habits of combat. Um, don't just like f rush in like a fool and get yourself blown up every fight. You need to sort of finesse it. And e each ship has their own fighting style. So kite class ships here, which my um, 
my officer is controlling. It does barely any damage at all, but it's very fast and mobile. So it can do quick strikes. It can get in close, dump a little lot of damage, and then just get out of dodge. Some, some, the largest ships, for instance, lumber really, really, really slowly. So, you know, you're not going to do sort of hit and run tactics. And then there's one last thing to look at, which is phase skimmer. Three, ready. This is the special ability of the ship. Uh, there is something like, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so special abilities. Each ship comes stock with one. You can't change your special ability. It's dependent on your ship type. And phase skimmer lets me do micro, micro teleports. Um, which is a pretty handy thing. I'll, I'll demonstrate one here. As you can see, I uh, teleported forward. So here is the battle, and I'm just going to fight this one out. So the thing I have to think of is leading my shots, making sure I'm hitting their ship, making sure my ship doesn't get overloaded. I just hit them with a bunch of my swarmer missiles. Now right now, I'm going to pause it for a second. As you can see, my flux is actually really, really, really high. So what I'm going to do is back up and vent purposefully. Their ship is really not in much of a condition to um, attack me. I've damaged it quite a bit. But their flux is low. So I'm going to hit V to vent out once I think I'm out of range of their ship. And now my flux went from about two-thirds or so to zero. Another thing I could do when I want to vent out is if I hit the tab screen, I can tell my um, escort to just actually eliminate them. And that actually, that will use up a command point up here. But that will cause it so that instead of them following me around, they will engage, which actually might open up a window for me to then vent. So if you feel like enemies are swarming you, what you can do is you can order your allies to push them back so that you can recover. And boom, their ship has been destroyed. Now, sometimes ships will be disabled instead of destroyed. When you disable a ship, uh, sometimes you'll be able to get you. You'll be offered the option to salvage it and roll it back into your fleet. In this instance, I just destroyed it outright. Uh, when you destroy ships, your my relationship with the pirates went down. I gained a little credits. And I gained these salvaged materials from their destroyed ship. I'm just going to take all. But it was some supplies, fuel, heavy machinery, and metals. Alright. So my fleet's supply consumption has gone up. The reason is, uh, after you... I'm just going to pause it for a second. After you enter combat, your combat readiness goes down. So my combat readiness has a maximum of 70%. Right now it's 54% which means that my ship doesn't operate at, at 100%. It operates at slightly less than 100%, and I'm going to be using extra supplies, which is right here. I have 36 supplies, and I'm using three a day. Uh, once I hit maximum combat readiness, my supply usage will go down. It will go down to a normal amount. Um, additionally, my escort, my ally here, uh, also has a combat readiness of their own, so I'm recovering 10 a day, so within two days, I will be back up to 70%. They're recovering five a day, so they'll take uh, three days to get back up to 70% because they're down 13% regaining five a day, and I'm down 19% regaining 10 a day. You can also tell your ships to suspend recovery and repair. So let's say I didn't have enough supplies to fully um, max out readiness for both ships, and I just wanted my ship to get fully ready. I could then say, hey, suspend your supply. As you can see here, they're using 0.4 supplies a day. If I suspend, they're only using 0.1 a day. And if I mothball, um, they would use nothing. Now, mothballed ships um, have their combat readiness reduced to zero. So if you unmothball a ship, it will be very costly supply wise to get it ready for combat again. So don't mothball unless you absolutely have to. The reason a mothball would be if in the middle of combat or if at the end of combat you were able to salvage an enemy's ship, that enemy's ship that you salvaged is likely to be really, really, really damaged. And if you didn't have enough supplies to repair that ship up to full, you might just want to mothball it until you had the supplies uh, to repair it back up. But I want them to regain readiness, so I'm going to allow that. So now I've, um, I've leveled up. 
in my opinion, one of the most important um, skills. So, so you have a limited amount of skill points. Uh, there is a maximum level, um, and once you hit that maximum level, you get don't get additional skill points. So you get fifty two of them in total. Um, it's pretty easy to level up to around level 20 or 30 or so and then it really starts to slow down after that so you should get the skills that you need soon so you have combat skills leadership skills technology skills and industry skills combat skills are just making your ship better not your allies no one else just your ship better uh, leadership skills um allow you to have more command points or more officers stuff like that it's basically uh everybody's ships are a little bit stronger in your whole group technology is um again mostly your pilot ship so here as you can see uh level one is pilot ship bonus whereas here it's like level one is fleet bonus uh for technology it is not combat it is sort of technology stuff some of it is um for the fleet so here we are like all ships in the fleet gain this bonus or fleet bonus is here and then industry is not for ships but for planets eventually in this game you own you are given the ability to colonize planets and industry generally or mostly just makes well so this ability for instance makes you get more stuff from salvaged enemies um yeah so the, the abilities that I like, that I think are most important, at least for me, would be um, top speed for helmsmanship is really, really useful. Being able to run away and outrun enemies. The level two of helmsman is really, really nice. Um, the one I like, I think the most is loadout design level three for 10% more ordinance points. And that's usually what I focus on early on. Um, So for you to, to level up, let me uh, show this. I can't put any points into technology unless I add technology one. Now adding technology one doesn't actually do anything for me. It just allows me to get level one technology here. Um, so if I put two points in technology and two points into loadout design, I'll have max flux, flux capacitors 20% and max flux vents 20%, which means I have more energy to spend before my flux caps out and I can vent out my flux faster. Uh, and this is how I want to level up uh, my first two points or my first four points. For me to advance the, the tutorial, I have to quick save again. And it's telling me that I've leveled up. Uh, you can only level up to 50 and you hit C to level up. So you get a maximum of um, of 52 points because I'm level 2 and you start off with 2 so 52 is your max uh, so now it's saying that I've received a type beam communications from the inhabited world and Syra and I should go there as soon as possible so after dismissing this dialogue hit E to open my intel screen and then lay in a course for Ansira or hit tab so Intel would be E, and here is my mission from Ansira. I can then show on map, here it is, and I can lay in a course. I know I did that really fast, or alternatively, just hit tab. Here is Ansira. Oops, uh, here's Ansira, and if I hold left mouse button, I can lay in a course. And that just brings you to Ansira autopiloted. As you can see, I'm flying and I don't, I don't, I'm not having to do anything. Now, there's a lot of dangers in this game. Uh, so when you fly into a nebula here, um, it reduces the range enemy fleets can see you by 50%. Uh, it also reduces the speed of your fleet. The larger your fleet is, the more speed it's reduced. So if you have a big fleet bearing down on you, you can fly into a nebula if you have a small fleet and outrun it a lot easier because large fleets slow down more in nebulas. And then uh, I'm also getting two new abilities, Sustain Burn and Interdiction Pulse. So Sustain Burn, um, what it, this does is allows you to basically double your speed, but it takes a little while for you to gain the speed. 
So it's like slow acceleration, but high max speed. Um, so yeah, you're gonna be sustain burning a lot. And then when you hold left shift, left shift actually just increases the uh, time speed. It just makes time, as you can see, speeding up time, makes time progress faster. Because there's a lot of empty space in space. And a lot of the times you're gonna just be traveling between, um, between zones or whatever. It's also saying that as I uh, get closer to Ansira, I'm going to need to turn on my um, transponder. So I gain the ability of transponder. So my, right now my transponder is off. If I hit it once, it's primed to turn on. If I hit it twice, I turn it on. And then once you see the um, this sort of uh, movement around the icon, it means my transponder is on. So when you're in uh, owned space, right now this is um, hegemony space because in Zero is a hegemony world. The hegemony is a faction that requires you to have your transponders on. Uh, pirates don't care if your transponders are on. So over here at the Darren Kuyu or whatever the name of that mining station is, uh, if pirates catch you with your transponder off, they they're not gonna they're not gonna be upset. Whereas if the hegemony catches my transponder off, uh, it will actually reduce the how much their faction likes me. Another thing to note is, um, as you can imagine, flying into a, a star is a very bad idea. Don't do it. Um, yeah, definitely don't do it. So here's Ansira, and the exclamation mark here means that they want to talk to me. So all I got to do is click on the planet. Uh, there's a bunch of different options here. Military options is definitely don't do this. Uh, I am a teeny, teeny, teeny little fleet. And until you are a mega power, which takes many, many, many hours in this game, you're not going to be considering military options against, um, faction planets. You might be considering military options against pirate bases, but not a faction's base, because if you piss off a faction, uh, there is hell to pay. I can also go to the dockside bar, which is a good way to pick up work. Uh, you can trade. So here I'm going to trade. I don't actually have use for the metals here, but there's two types of trade. There's open market trade where you pay um, tariffs of 30%, or there's black market trade where you don't. So, selling all these metals on the black market gives me 115 credits. On the open market, it gives me 80. Uh, now, if you're wondering, what's the disadvantage of the black market? If you sell, an, if you sell or buy enough stuff on the black market, um, the hegemony or whomever um, owns your system will likely figure out that your halls have the the amount of supplies in your halls have changed enough that you basically traded with the black market and it affects your relationship. So there's a little bit of relationship disadvantage uh, trading with the black market. I'm gonna do it anyway, cause I don't care. And I'm also gonna sell my heavy machinery. And that gives me 821 credits. So let's confirm that. All right, hit escape. And this brings me out to the main screen. So I can, uh, go down to the dockside bar or the comm directory. And I'm here to talk to someone, so the comm directory. And the station commander, 4th uh, Cabricane, wants to talk to me. And they're asking me if I need a refresher on events or if I understand like the geopolitical uh, situation. I'm gonna say I need a refresher on events. So they've been running experiments on dormant gate, trying to connect it back to the domain skate network. Now let me explain some of the lore of star sector. Uh, I might be getting a little wrong cause I'm a little rusty, but the idea is that, uh, there used to be gates that allowed for the flow of traffic between earth and these sort of colonies and the gates. And I don't think they built the gates. They found them. I could be getting this wrong, but basically the gates don't work. Essentially the gates don't work and all of these colonies in deep space are now totally cut off from Earth. Um, and what happened is that some of the factions or some people believed that it was like the use of technology that um, closed the gates and they formed a religion called the Luddites um, who are very hostile. They're basically pirates, but um, they hate technology. Which is weird because they have space fleets and all that. And there is a lot of other factions that formed from the collapse of these gates. One of which is the Hegemony. 
who are the sort of more militaristic faction uh, that came out of it. And they're telling me um, about the mission that they want me to embark on. And they're saying, um, the miners turned pirates are guarding the jump points, preventing us to gather recent data. Uh, basically, they're asking me to go to Durin Kuyu. And I'm asking why me? And they're saying, why not? And they're saying it's not going to be a milk run. Basically, there's combat involved. Uh, me even agreeing to this mission um, increases my reputation with the hegemony by one. So I'm one out of 100. You can also go down to negative 100. And then increases my relationship with this specific person by two. Um, most of the time, relationships with specific uh, individuals are not all that useful. I'll just throw that out there. You're not, uh, that's not how you recruit people to your fleets. So courting them or doing missions over and over and over for specific individuals isn't really a thing. Not yet, at least. So I'm asking them what the plan is. And the plan is for me to go dark, which is to purposely turn off my transponder so that no one can read me. Basically look like a, uh, you know, just a, an asteroid or something like that and if they're if they notice me when i go dark trying to approach their um their base then i trigger an emergency burn which is very fuel inefficient but basically floors it uh and and it's saying it eats up a good chunk of fuel too all right and that's all i need to know so i'm gonna quick save So down here, you can see my sensors range and my detection range. Because my transponder is on and I am um, sustained burning, my detection range is really, really, really high here. 1720 is sort of the range. So if I turn off the transponder and stop the sustain burn, my, as you can see, my uh, detection range lowers a bunch. And then as I approach the mining station here, um, let me lay in a course. I'm going to go dark, which means that you move a lot slower, but you're also a lot more silent. So now I'm moving at only five burn speed, um, but it's very difficult for enemies to detect me. If I hold left shift, it just speeds up time. So if they do see me, I'm going to want to hit four, which is my emergency burn, and that can get me out of dodge quick. Now, I also might be able to see them. So there's a possibility that because of my sensor range, I can see them and they can't see me. And there they are. And they discovered me and started to emergency burn towards me. Their max burn level is nine. Uh, my max burn level is 18 because they're slower. So as you can see, they're back here. Now, I don't, I'm not close enough to determine who they are now. Uh, but it's obviously the same fleet I saw before. But what I can do is give them the runaround and get to the station without actually engaging them. I basically outran them. Uh, so now that I'm at the Darren Kuyu mining station, um, I can open up the comm and talk to Rada Nevada, who's the agent that I need to talk to. And she's going to give me all the intel that I need. Uh, there's also the possibility to trade goods here. Uh, the open market isn't likely to, yeah, I can't really afford anything here, but as you can see, you can hire crew or buy weapons or, um, mods for your ships. So now I've done what I needed to do. Uh, if I hit E for Intel, it says deliver the data back to the and Sira, station commander. Uh, the trick is, I've got that enemy fleet up my butt. So I'm gonna turn on sustained burn because I have enough distance between me and them to be able to build up speed. Now, if you had a uh, if you had an enemy ship like on top of you, sustained burn takes a while to fire up. So if, if they emergency burn and you sustain burn, they'll catch you. Emergency burn is like a very short sprint 
but it's less speed than the max speed of a sustain burn. So as you can see, my sustain burn, I can move up to 20, which is the max speed in the game. Whereas the emergency burn, I can only move up to like 18 or 16, something like that. All right, so here I am in Encira. Let's talk to the fourth Capricorn. Uh, I gained 5,000 credits because I did the job. They like me a little bit more and uh, fourth himself likes me more as well. I'm gonna ask him, is there a problem? And they're giving me a mission to get an AI core. These I could talk a lot about, AI cores. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and try to retrieve this AI core that I've been tasked with. So I was given another ability called um, uh, called Active Sensor Burst. So it basically sends out a ping. Everybody can see me, but it helps you find things. Um, and then the other thing is the Interdiction Pulse, which is a way to interrupt a uh, another fleet's like movement abilities, like a sustain burn. So if you're trying to chase someone down and you're close enough to hit them with an Interdiction Pulse, it will take them out of a sustain burn, meaning that they'll be slower. All right, so if I check my uh, intel here, the intel says that what I'm looking for is near Pontus. So I'm gonna lay in a course a little bit south of Pontus because I don't wanna fly through uh, Galadia, who is the, which is the, um, the star. So if you steer, veer away from the course because you're trying to avoid something like I just did, all you gotta do is hit A to resume the course. So you can take over by holding left mouse and start steering in a different direction and then hit A to resume the course. And that way you don't have to keep laying in a new course every time. You just pick up where whatever last course you had laid in. So now that I'm um, roughly where I'm supposed to be, I'm going to active sensor burst. And as you can see here, there was a little bit of a ping on my minimap uh, over in this region, which is probably where I need to be. And then you can see an unidentified entity. Now these entities could also be enemies, mind you. Or um, they could be dormant enemies or something like that, or pirates or whatever. You have no idea what your your uh, active sensor burst is picking up. You just know that there's something out there. And this is a domain era probe. And they have um, an automated drone. Now the thing about this, to read into this, is um this drone here see all these little orange bars that means it has damages so each bar is this bar is a faulty power grid so that means that their power sucks erratic fuel injectors which means that they're like slower increased maintenance which means that um to regain combat readiness it's more costly uh what were the other ones uh, unreliable subsystems and compromised armor Meaning that, you know, again, the ship is weaker and weaker and weaker. The more of those orange bars you see, the weaker the enemy is. So this is a particularly messed up automated defense drone. Uh, you can't talk to them because they're automated defenses. So you just have to fight them. So again, just like before, I'm going to tell my ally to escort me. And then I'm going to control my flagship. If you hit R, you um, you toggle them to be your primary target. And then I'm going to also hit Control-2 to turn my Swarmer missiles onto auto-fire. And my opening um, missile volley, like, totally messed them up. That was a really easy fight. Most fights aren't that easy. That was a really easy fight because that ship had a lot of strikes against it. It's also part of the tutorial mission. If you skip the tutorial, a lot of the fights that you're going to enter into are really not easy. Like, the tutorial is like out of the frying pan into the fire once you finish. So we'll pick through the wreckage. There's a little bit of salvage goods here. And my officer, Salomon Ahmed, is ready to level up. And then I'm going to salvage this uh, domain era probe to get a gamma core and that was the mission also now that I've uh, salvaged the gamma core 
uh, the probe has broken down into a debris field. So if I scavenge the debris field, um, there it's likely that I find something. There's significant risk. Let's take the risk this time. I lost six crew taking the risk, and I found nothing. Bummer. All right, so now I need to go back to fourth, which is in Ansira. Oops. Uh, let's lay in a course. Uh, as you can see, the solar system actually orbits. Um, so Ansira used to be up here, but as time went on, it's just going to orbit around the sun. So it, it, it's not like a static solar system. Uh, I'm going to turn on my sustained burn so I get there a little sooner. Make sure not to fly into the sun. That would use up, that would basically damage your ships and use up extra supplies. Now, before I turn, uh, talk to the guy, I'm going to go to the store here and sell my metals on the black market. I'm also going to buy crew. So if you take a look at your crew, um, my minimum amount of crew that I need to operate is 19. And the max amount of crew that I can have is 60. I'm going to max out my crew. So I'm holding um, left mouse button and I'm going to buy, no, that's not what I want. Come on. Uh, if I, if you hold left control, it fills up um, to your max. So left control will fill me up to 60 out of 60. And then left control also sells like the full stack of something. So I'm paying about uh, 900 or 911 um, to, to buy the crew and sell my metals. So now I have a full crew. It means that, um, you know, if I have crew losses, I don't, I don't dip under minimum crew. Once you have less than the minimum amount to run your ship, your ship runs poorly, essentially. All right, so let's talk to fourth. He takes my Gamma Core. He doesn't pay fair market price for it. It was worth about 10K. He took it off my hands for 8K. The Gamma Cores or the AI Cores are um, sort of highly illegal. So from here on out, anytime I get an AI Core, there's Gamma, there's Beta, there's Alpha. Anytime I get a core, they're sort of illegal goods. Um, you can either, uh, if you're a Boy Scout, you can either turn them over to station commanders for a bit of a bounty, which is not what they're truly worth. Or it will make them happy, however, when you turn over an AI core because they're illegal. Um, or you can sell them on the black market or you can use them yourself. Uh, that comes much later. And now they're just telling me about, um, they give me a, a civilian transport. Uh, and I'm supposed to go recover two ships from a debris, from a battlefield. And the battlefield is down here. So I'm gonna, if I check my fleet, here is the uh, civilian ship. Now the civilian cruiser, actually let me go back to Insira. The civilian cruiser adds a huge amount of um, uh, crew capacity. So I go from one from 60 to 160 because that new ship adds uh, the capacity for 100 crew. I'm going to buy all 100 crew on the black market. The reason being is when I recover uh, ships that have been damaged, I'm going to have to put crew onto those ships to man them. So having more crew means I can recover more ships. And then I'm also going to uh, essentially just about bankrupt myself on the black market buying supplies. Supplies will help to repair those uh, recovered ships. As long as I'm on, um, when you're in a solar system, you're not using fuel. You only use fuel tr um, moving between solar systems. So I, I'm not worried about my fuel usage yet. So this mission I'm on right now is a really important one because it allows you to expand your fleet. Um, this is, you know, obviously the easiest way to expand your fleet. So I've getting all this little experience from discovering derelict ships. Uh, sustain, sustained burn doesn't really allow you to maneuver very well um, or accelerate very well. So you sort of drift. So taking a look at these uh, Dram class tankers 
allow you to store more fuel, which is pretty useful. Buffalo class destroyers are good combat ships. Uh, Condor class light carriers are good combat ships. Hammerhead class destroyers are decent combat ships. Uh, Wolf frigate is what I'm flying. Kite class is what my uh, my second in command is flying. In fact, let me uh, do something here. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, this Solomon leveled up. So I can either give him impact mitigation level 2 or damage control level 2 for leveling up. Uh, I'm going to give him impact mitigation. That helps him be a little bit tankier. Alright, so let's go ahead and aim for these ships that are the nicest. So this Condor class cruiser, light carrier rather, is kind of the nicest ship here. So let's con consider ship recovery. And if I recover the ship, um, it has three uh, damaged systems that are going to make it not great. And this is totally normal. Uh, it's totally normal when you recover a ship for it to have damaged systems. I'm going to decide to recover this ship. And it's now part of my fleet. And then it's warning me that some of my ships i.e. the light carrier that I just recovered, has really low combat readiness, and basically don't put it into a battle, because it will destroy itself. Uh, let's go to the Buffalo MK2. This one, uh, I didn't have the chance to salvage it, uh, or to recover it. It was too badly damaged, and it actually didn't even have any salvageable goods. This hammerhead I could recover. It only has two broken component um, systems, which is actually really, really good. So I'm going to recover this ship. Uh, but the thing about recovering this ship is that uh, my minimum crew required for all of the ships to function function properly is now 164, and I only have 160. So my fleet won't operate perfectly. But before I return back to the guy. Um, I'm going to salvage all the other ships. Because they're just, you know. I could recover ship. I could recover some of the ships that I think are going to be worth something. Most ships that have damaged ship section, sections aren't going to be worth something. So what I'm going to do is just salvage them into materials. Um, The DRAM is worth recovering, because it only has two broken pieces. Generally speaking, if it has two things that are wrong with it, I'll recover it. If it has more than two, I generally leave it alone. Alright, so now we've um, fully salvaged that battle, all the ships that were in that battle, and I'm going to go back to Insira. So as you see, the average combat readiness for my entire fleet is about 40%, which is particularly low. That's because... Um, my these ships are really really low and um and because my crew is under strength my combat readiness is actually maxed out at 62 percent or uh max will be maxed at 67 percent so i can't even have um a, a 70 percent combat readiness because uh i need more crew but that's exactly why i bought the 100 crew that were available to me last time i was in port and it's warning me about combat readiness again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have uh, sustained burns back here, but I didn't. Alright, so let's go ahead and trade goods. I'm going to be trading on the black market again. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to hold shift and buy a few crew. I'm going to buy... Just 10. And now I have 170 out of 169, which means I can now operate to max capacity, providing I don't lose one person. Um, all right. And then if you check the fleets here, some of these ships have ordnance points left, which means you can outfit them better. Uh, actually, all of the ones I just recovered have ordnance points left. It, it generally means that they don't have weapons on the ships. The ships are just barren. Uh, additionally, if you refit, not that I have the points do, so refitting allows you to um, assign new weapons and stuff. So if you t take a look at the kit cruiser I have here, uh, I have no turret in its missile slot, and a, a light auto cannon here, a light auto cannon here, and a bunch of messed up systems. Uh, one way to 
fill up your ordinances is to add capacitors and vents. I can't really afford anything else, so what I'm just going to do is add a bunch of capacitors and vents to the Condor class ship because I don't have the wealth to fix it up any other way. This uh, hammerhead, the, so the carrier here normally would have fighter bays, but I can't afford them. Um, this hammerhead destroyer is a destroyer ship, uh, and as you can see, it has a bunch of, it doesn't really have any weapons here. So I can add um, rail guns to it, and as you can see, my credits have dramatically gone down. Uh, it has, what, three rail guns now? So these two front-facing railguns have a very small firing arc. Basically, it has to fire where the ship is looking. And these railguns here uh, have a wide firing arc. So I'm just going to fill this thing up with railguns. Actually, let me not. Let me um, put in... Two railguns, and that's it. I'm not going to outfit this one up more because simply I can't afford it. And I'll fill uh, fill it up with capacitors and vents. You can also add subsystems here. So I can add um, auxiliary thrusters, um, which gives it more maneuverability, like turn speed. Uh, I could also add um, like hull integrity. So it has structural damage, which means its hull integrity is reduced. So I can then spend some of my um, some some of my um, ordnance points to increase its hull integrity again. And it looks like it also has damaged degraded engines, which means it's slower. Uh, I could do unstable injector, which increases the combat speed or um, safety overrides, which makes it move faster. All of these, a lot of these are... Um, huh, how to explain? They have benefits and deficits to it but for this I'll just do uh, let's see what do I want hardened subsystems I guess toss that in so now I've used up all the ordnance points for the hammerhead and for the uh, yeah I'm also going to adjust the weapon groups so for weapon group one it will be the rail guns for weapon group two it will be the point defense turrets and the rail guns aren't going to be on auto fire so that means that if I control this ship the rail guns have to be manually controlled by the pilot and the point defense is automatically controlled. Uh, this fuel ship here, I'm actually going to remove all of its weapons and just give it uh, uh, auxiliary fuel tanks so it, it um, stores more fuel. And that's it. Then I'm just going to give it some vents and capacitors. There's one ordnance point left. All right, I'll add something else. I'll add uh, expanded cargo. So there is outfitting three of my ships. So here's my fleet. These ships here are still pretty messed up. Another thing that you could do when you refit is to um, restore it. Not that I have the money for it, but restoring it allows you to remove some of these damaged ship sections. It's just insanely costly. I totally don't have the money for it. Um... All right, and then I can talk to the fourth, the uh, station commander, but uh, that's about all the time I have for this episode, guys. So I hope you enjoyed episode one of the Star Sector series. If you're uh, interested to see how this continues, uh, tune in next time. Uh, my full schedule is up at radamat.com, and if you have any questions about this episode, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.